let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be making the Christie crossbody from Lynn's Handmade. This is such a super cute quick sew. I absolutely had a blast making it. Cutting it took 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, sewing it took maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Other than that, super quick. Um, I did not use any interfacing whatsoever in this pattern um, for the materials I used. I used vinyl, I used a velvet from Indolove Creations, um, and then I used webbing from my friend Sandra at the Garner Sewing Room. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. It is tiny, so keep that in mind, like very small, but super cute. I love that it uses so much webbing because it's something we can't stop buying. I say we like it's everybody, but maybe it's just me. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Feel free to subscribe and let me know down below what you think of this pattern. There is a cut list included as well as some of the pattern pieces, but really you only need the main pattern piece and the rest are rectangles so it's super quick to cut. I used waterproof canvas for my lining and a textured vinyl for my exterior and then I used um, a like faux suede for the rest of the pieces um, and then I added an overlay to my lining. I have a full tutorial on this method um, but this is one of my favorite methods to use. It's super quick um, and it's a great, um, you know, finished product, I think. Um, and you do leave this open to turn the bag through. I am going to start with the front pocket piece. Um, since I'm using vinyl for this, and I wanted to add an overlay of this um, velvet. I decided to cut half an inch off of the top and then I'm going to fold the bottom under a quarter of an inch like the pattern states. So just using double sided tape and folding it up that distance. Um, the pattern does state that this is a raw edge underneath. If you wanted to, you could use um, heat and bond light to adhere a fabric to the wrong side, or you could use like a water resistant canvas to lay it in place, fold the vinyl edge up over the fabric's raw edge, um, and then add like a little topper or something like that to your vinyl if you wanted to. Just just a thought. So I'm adding half inch wide double sided tape down the center of this velvet piece. I did not mark out the center, but I'm not worried about it. I'll use clips to hold this. So if you are making the woven version of the front slip pocket. This is a little bit different method. Um, so just be sure to read over the pattern instructions. So I'm going to fold, lay this in the center and then fold the top edge over top. Oh yeah, this is going to be so cool. All right. And then I'm going to top stitch this into place. And then if you wanted to add a woven label to this seam, you totally could. And then just make sure that you caught the bottom edge of that as well. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for now. The next step is adding the um, zippered pocket to the lining and I did a time lapse of that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get these handles ready to go. I 
We want a six inch piece of double-sided tape to go into the center. So I'm measuring and cutting. So there should be three inches from each end So if you need to mark that out, you can. I'll fold this over. And then you're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge at that double-sided tape. So I'm gonna back stitch a few times to start, and then back stitch a few times at the end, and then I'll pull those threads through to one side in a moment. And then if you wanted to, you could use your lighter very gently, especially along the sides of webbing um, to heat seal those threads in too. are prepped. Oh, so fun. Um, and then I'll go ahead and prep my D-ring connectors. I am using the velvet for the D-ring connectors as well, which kind of seems like a bad idea, but I don't see why it wouldn't hold up. So fingers crossed, it goes, goes okay. Um, it is a little bit bulky to have in the seam. I almost feel like maybe having waterproof canvas for these connectors would be smart. I wouldn't necessarily use vinyl, um, just so it's really thin in that section. And yet I'm doing it anyway. I'll grab my triangle rings and slide that through. And then make sure the edge that you folded into the center is what is touching right sides together. Set that aside for now. And then we can move on to assembling the front and back main body exterior. So we're gonna measure four and a half inches in from either side. And a 
center the short ends of the webbing. Okay, so that gets centered over that section. You want it to be facing the other way. You want to see the folded in section facing up. Yeah. And this is so when it's folded up, you see the nice, cute folded edge there. That's okay, we make mistakes, we learn. Repeat that on both main panels. So I'm measuring four and a half and four and a half. I'm going to lay this so the folded edge is facing up. And if you need to, you can fold your webbing in half to find that center instead of just kind of eyeballing it like I was doing. <laughs> Ooh, I bet it would look really cool. Um, like on the Guardian backpack, how she has that handle cover, I bet that would look really cool with this kind of strap design as well. Okay, so now we're gonna add the top overlay piece. Um, because of my fabric choices, I have decided not to use any interfacing for any part of this, um, but the pattern does call for fusible fleece. And I could definitely see if you are using woven fabrics that that would be really beneficial. So this is a 3 8 inch seam allowance here. And I'm just going to batch sew these together. And as always, if you need to mark out those seam allowances, you absolutely can. Um, and then we're gonna fold that up and top stitch underneath the handle. So we're gonna press that seam down and top stitch on the vinyl. is a very satisfying looking stitch. And so I'm folding that seam down as I stitch across that. I almost wonder if you could add your strap, your crossbody strap connector to that seam. It's right up against the zipper, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I almost feel like it could be there if you really wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna pick my least favorite side for the back, and I think it's gonna be this one. And I think I'm gonna fix my handle top stitching. I didn't exactly do the six inches. I might have to mark that out next time just to help me. Okay, nobody needs to know that that happened. Okay, that's better. Um, so yeah, let's lay this over 
the top. All right, so lay the top long edge down along the seam joining the exterior seam into place. So it should be placed right up against there. Make sure it's nice and straight. So cute. Okay, so then I'm gonna fold this in half to find that center line and I'm just gonna crease the center line instead of marking it out with a pen. So we're gonna base along the side edge, making sure this seam is nicely pressed See the center. So I'm going to stop. Oh, I went past it. All right. All right. So the center is seven and a half. So I want to mark seven, seven and a quarter, wait, no, 6.75 is the center. So I want to mark out six and a half. Yes, six and a half from either side. No, you're so stupid. <laughs> Six and a half is the center. I'm not editing that out. It's fine. So I'm going to measure 6.25 from either side. 6.25. Yeah. And I'm going to make like a really thick center line, like a box stitch. 6.25. and add rivets. I think that'll look really cool. Okay. All right. I've got that measured out. I'm gonna start at one side. So 6.25. And then it's a half inch, half inch. I love it. I love it. Okay. So then I'm going to add rivets. I'm going to do, I think I'll just do two down the center of that. Let's see. Okay. 
All right, so that creates two really nice slip pockets on that front panel there. And then I'm gonna add a woven, not a woven label, but a cork tag to this side. I really feel like this bag, being the size it is, doesn't really lend itself to like a big metal tag for me anyway, at least with what I've picked. So I decided to go with this cork tag. If I can get the tape off. There you go. It's like the perfect size in between those handles. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get that other one. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like that. Alright, so now we're going to work on our zipper and put this thing together. So easy. <clears throat> Oops, that. Well, that was my zip pocket. I'll just throw everything else on the floor. Hold, please. Okay, because I am using um, the velvet for my zipper tabs, again, probably a really dumb idea. It's going to be super bulky. Um, I cut mine to one inch wide. And so it'll have raw edges folded over the other. But I don't see this fraying, so I don't think it'll be an issue. Guess we'll find out. And then I just cut this out of a scrap piece, so I'm trimming off all my extra fabric. <laughs> and then we are going to add the triangle connectors with this as well. So I want this to be like the front of the bag, so I need to keep in mind how I attach the zipper. I don't think the double-sided tape is going to work at all on the right side of this velvet. So I'm just going to line up my zipper and baste it first. I'm gonna do that really quick. All 
And the seam allowance on this bag are fairly consistently 3 8 of an inch, so keep that in mind. And then I'm going to add the lining panel without a zippered pocket to this side. And you could use double-sided tape for this side if you felt like you could. And I am sewing as close as this machine can to the zipper pull. Um, and it's probably about a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from the outer edge. And now we're going to top stitch through only the exterior fabric. So we're going to fold this over, keep my lining up and out of the way. Iron things down if you need to. I'm just going to top stitch through that exterior fabric. Mm -hmm. Velvet is so fun to top stitch. All right, and then this seam, you wanna make sure that you're pressing flat, either with your iron or <clears throat> what else you can, whatever else you can. Um, and then I think it says to add your rivets at the end. That makes sense. So you can get in nice and close to top stitching. Okay. So your D-rings, your D-ring connectors, are going to get attached right up against your zipper tabs. There are special markings to use for that so that they are not floppy. Um, if you think I did that, you're wrong. I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> Like I said, they're going to be placed right next to your zipper tab. You want to give yourself enough space to top stitch. So I'm placing it where I can see the zipper tape the zipper teeth through the little opening in the triangle ring. And that's essentially like as close as I can get. Make sure you trim away any extra little threads I'm going to zip this back up for now. And then I'm going to add the side with the zipper pocket. Make sure your zipper pocket is open. We do turn, turn, turn through that. <clears throat> I'm going to add double sided tape to the top of this so that at least one layer isn't shifting around. I'm like, I don't know who I am if I'm not using double-sided tape. <laughs> so your lining should be centered on the zipper and lining up with your other lining piece. Should be. This is such a beginner friendly bag. Like it's a very, so far very forgiving. Um, and it's like a big giant zipper pouch with some extra goodies included. So I'm really excited. I'm really thankful to have found a little bit of time to be able to sew it. Okay. 
I'm starting on this end. It was a little silly because I also have my zipper pull here. So I'm gonna unzip so that at least my zipper pull is out of the way. And then line up your exterior fabric with the zipper pull and go nice and slow close to that hardware. Keep your exterior fabric lined up with that zipper. Now I'm past all of that so I can re-zip that closed and continue laying my exterior lined up with my lining and zipper tape. Continue sewing with that 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're getting close to the other D-ring zipper. Just want to go nice and slow. Make sure you're not hitting the hardware with your needle. <clears throat> that would be bad. Very, very bad. And then continue on. If you had trouble getting super close to that, um trying to see I did a pretty okay job it got a little wobbly here we can fix that while we are top stitching it you're going to be able to kind of like manipulate how it's folded along that seam so I can lay this flat to top stitch so even though my um, initial sewing stitch wasn't super straight I can sew through these layers to fold so it looks straight. And I actually love the idea of increasing this bag. It is fairly small, but it would be an awesome like work bag, like laptop bag, little crossbody situation but I understand why it's the size it is. All right, so then just double check in these areas that you got as close as possible. You would hate for it to come apart later, but I think we did pretty good. <clears throat> I did not sew through the lining, nor was I supposed to. So we're gonna make sure that we fold this down and press nicely. All right, so now it's time to sew these darts closed. We've got a lot of them, so be patient with yourself. And so here is how I like to do it. So I'll backstitch here, I'll come forward, and then when I backstitch, I come into the seam allowance because if you continue to sew over this part here, you're gonna perforate your vinyl or fabric, et cetera, and you don't want that. So that's what we're looking at. So we'll just continue that all eight times. And if you need to change your stitch length to maybe like a four, you could do that. Just be really careful, again, when you're back stitching with vinyl. Give each back stitch a little poke. All right, we're on the lining now. Um, make sure you have your zipper pocket and your lining unzipped and the bottom is open for turning the bag through.
All right. So now we can put right sides together. Lining up the accent panels first and foremost. Those are going to be really important. People are going to know if you didn't line them up. And the reason you don't top stitch through the lining is because it's a lot easier to get these layers to sit flat in this section if your lining can come away from that seam. So if you feel like you needed to top stitch through your lining and you did it, you're going to have issues with your seams sitting flat. All right, I've got everything clipped together and I'm gonna sew around the outside edge at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I have my stitch length set to four. I think that works just fine. some thicker sections where the zipper is and that pocket with the accent. So I'm doing a little gentle back stitch over those to help reinforce. a hump jumper to help you get over the zipper tabs, etc. All right. And you really don't need to trim down any of your seam allowances because <clears throat> it's a small stitch length, a small seam allowance, I should say. Sorry. So we're just going to turn the bag. Turn it out. So I would say the only change that I would make the next time I make this is I would mark out on my webbing the six inches I need to sew because I didn't get that very even. was super quick to sew, super quick to cut out. Um, there's really only one pattern piece you need to print, but there's more if you want to. Okay. And then to help me press out the corners, I'm just taking my fist along the inside and pressing out the darts. And then it says you can use a screwdriver to help you push out those corners. Should I need to? But usually you can take, yeah, I just got my finger in there. It's not too bad. And press our lining in. The lining is designed to be a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, so that's good. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. 
in the middle. All right, we're gonna sew up the turn hole. What'd you just call me? And then all that's left to do is rivet the handles into place, which I mean, technically is optional. So I'm pressing the lining pocket in, but riveting those handles into place will help your lining stay down as well. I didn't make this strap. <gasps> oh my goodness. It's so cute. It really is tiny. Like, but it's such a cute size. So I'm really gently just taking a lighter to my threads. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm gonna make my crossbody strap super quick and then I will show you adding rivets. Again, those are completely optional but they will keep your handles up at a nice size and um, like I said, keep your lining in place. Next is the crossbody strap. This is super simple, the instructions are included but it's really quick when you use webbing. All right, let us rivet through. So you could definitely mark this out. Here we go, we'll do. I'm gonna go so since I added that vinyl overlay, I don't want to mark through the overlay. I'm just going to add one there. And you may want to use a little bit of double-sided tape underneath to help hold the webbing into place while you're punching through all those layers because you don't want to pull up too far on your webbing and make a hole in the wrong spot because <laughs> we just finished sewing the bag. We don't want to add holes. <laughs> and then press through all that. Make sure you're pulling down on your lining as well when you're punching that hole in. Again, this is one meant to look pretty, but also to help hold the lining down away from the zipper. <laughs> I can't get over how cute and little it is. <laughs> so cute. So I'm folding down. And then I'm marking out where to add those rivets. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and all that's left to do is attach the crossbody strap. And that is it for making the Christie crossbody by Lynn's Handmade. It's absolutely adorable. Seriously. Let's see. So it's really little. I love the handy slip pockets. I have an iPhone 13, no, iPhone 12 Pro. And it fits really nicely. Right there, you could add a snack or even another phone if you needed to. The handles being webbing is so nice because it doesn't add any weight um, and they do like flop out of the way nicely. But if they do want to perk up, it's not annoying or anything. So I really like this handle method. Um, I feel like if you added the strap connectors here, it wouldn't sit as nicely because all of the weight would be here. So it would kind of fold over time. I may try it in one just because I don't personally trust myself with them being that close to the zipper, but we'll see. Um, I hope you grab this pattern. If you are a beginner sewist, I really think you can do this. Um, if you're using the materials suggested in the pattern, this is absolutely domestic friendly. Um, I don't think what I've used here would be domestic friendly with the velvet and the vinyl. Um, but I think if you used vinyl and a water resistant canvas or something, you'd have no problem. And um, yeah, if you're not already subscribed, subscribed, I'd love for you to do so and I will see you next time.